majesty ascribe and crown him Lord of all. Oh, that with yonder sacred throne we at his feet may fall and we'll join the everlasting song and crown him Lord of all we'll join the everlasting song and crown
like nitroglycerin on the uh, steps. Uh, could be serious. It's up in the pulpit. I guess it's nitroglycerin.
be born again, isn't it? Yes. Miss Sherry, is everybody okay back there? Y'all are everybody where they need to be? We just have musical chairs right there during the singing. No, I'm not the only one with issues, amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know, right before the service, we had somebody else get born again. And I was thinking, I was thinking during that song, what a blessing it must be. Brother Eddie right over here. Raise your hand, Brother Eddie, sitting right there on the front in the balcony. Some of you can't see him, but it's Brother Chris Duncan's uncle. And uh, they came up to the office, and we talked a little while. And buddy, he prayed and asked Jesus to come into his heart. And I want you to pray for him. He's got some battles to fight. But, boy, he's got help now. Amen. He has now the Holy Spirit of God living inside of him to help him every day, dealing with those things. But I thought while they were singing that uh, now he can enjoy that song like never before because he has been saved. And if you've been saved, you ought to be excited about that too. I just thank God for it. I mean, it's just a blessing how he's saving people. I got a text from Brother Allen. I think they had three saved at his jail service today. And we've just been blessed lately to see people saved. Last week we had several. On Wednesday, the teens had six, I think, got saved. And two more at the McDonald's later when they were eating. And it's just been a great time in the Lord. So let's don't miss what God is doing. And let's don't miss a chance to rejoice when he does it. So we praise the Lord for that. Let's bow and pray. We'll ask the Lord to bless our service tonight. And even while we're praying right now, go ahead, Miss Scott, play softly if you would. You praise the Lord for Brother Eddie getting saved tonight. Father, we thank you for how good you are to us. We thank you, Lord, for that song. And we're thankful, Lord, that we have got reason to rejoice if we know tonight that our name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And I'm thankful, Lord, that a new name was written down in glory just a little bit ago. And I'm thankful that I was able to uh, be a part of it. Lord and able to take the Bible, tell him what it says in there, what the plan of God is and how simple it is for, for a person to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And I thank you for that. And I thank you, Lord, that it's hope, not only for eternity, but hope now in this life. He's got help uh, with his troubles, with his struggles. And I praise you for that. I thank you, Lord, for those of us that are in here that you have helped and brought us from some rough places and dark places. And Lord, we got saved and got right with you and you've started the work in our life. And Lord, we're <clears throat> as we sung this morning, we're not what we want to be, but I am thankful that we're not what we used to be. We bless you for that. We bless you for the good spirit this morning, for the good, uh, uh, Lord, the good report from the jail service. All week this week, souls have been saved. Thank you for the all-night prayer meeting. Brother Nick and the crew that put that on and all the people that participated, we thank you for them. Thank you for those that have been fasting this week as we pray and ask God, uh, ask you, Lord, to help us with the youth rally. Father, we thank you for your many blessings, for your answered prayers. Lord, we do ask you now that you would hear us again tonight. We need something fresh and new from you. We need you to speak to us. Bless the choirs. They'll sing again. I pray that they wouldn't just go through the motions, that they wouldn't just say the words, but the words would be real to them. And that your spirit would, Lord, flow through them and into us, Lord, as we listen. And we could all rejoice together over the goodness of God, the good things of God. Be with Brother Ken as he leads the congregational singing. Be with us, Lord, as we have special singing in a little while. And then the preaching time, I pray that you would help us tonight. And, Lord, uh, we just thank you for all these things that you do. Thank you, Lord, that we have prayer, that we can pray when we face troubles and trials. We ask you to be with those that couldn't be here tonight for some problem in their life, some physical problem, maybe some having marital problems, financial problems, whatever it may be. Father, we pray that you'd bless them. If they're watching live stream, we ask you to reach through that screen, Lord, and speak to their heart. Let them know that you care. Let them know that you love them. Be with those that are awaiting test results. They'd get a good re result from that. And Lord, we just pray that you'd hear our prayers. But Lord, we also pray that you would be blessed tonight. I often pray it and I often say it. But Lord, help us to mean it tonight. We want this service to be a blessing to you. And we want you to receive praise and honor and worship while we're here. And you certainly are worthy of it. Lord, we're unworthy. We don't deserve anything. While I was talking to Brother Eddie and explaining the plan of salvation, Lord, very clearly, we understand that we are sinners and don't deserve to ever go to heaven, a place of holiness and perfection. But I'm thankful for the blood of Jesus that makes us worthy, that we can enter into the throne of grace boldly now by faith. And one of these days, physically, we'll come into the throne of God because of the blood of Jesus. And we praise you for all that. We do ask you now to bless the rest of the service. Speak to us as we need it. We'll praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's listen while the choir sings again.
humble the ladies on so I'm going to come up on to the platform please and help Brother David while they're getting ready to sing that I wonder who would uh, just stand up real quick and tell us about when you got saved it says let the redeemed of the Lord say so they were just singing about how good it is to be saved just very quickly stand up there and tell us where you were and what happened how the Lord saved your soul Brother Ken you start them everybody's nervous you tell them Tell us about when you got saved. October the 7th, 1984, a missionary came to my church and preached on Noah and the ark. Noah and the ark. And I thank God that day I got on board the ark and Jesus yeah. saved my soul. Amen. Well, your old boy. Amen. Day I've never forgot. I ain't got over it yet. Amen. Praise the Lord, I'm glad I'm saved. About got Amen. wound up about it this morning up Amen. there in the illustration, didn't you? That's right. Amen. Somebody else. Go ahead, Brother Jody. Uh, Go ahead.
Jean Googe wasn't even there that night. I'd been going for about two years and uh, just had a little bit of religion. I'd sang, I'd testified, and um, I remember just sitting there that night and I just got so tired of struggling with, am I or ain't I? You know, so it was like the Holy Spirit was, Jason had just got saved that year and and I remember thinking, how do you know? I mean, just yeah. how do you know? You know, and, and I remember that night I got up and asked my aunt, I said, will you pray with me? And she said, yeah. And she just like kind of looked at me, yeah, I'll go pray with you, you know. And yeah. I remember getting up, and as soon as I stepped up, I knew I wasn't saved. And the Lord saved me. Amen. My Amen. life was not been Amen. saved. Amen. And I thank the Lord yeah. for the joy and the biggest encouragement that I had that night. It really sounds silly, but I had a, 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 a lady that had been saved a while. She told me, she said, Oh, that joy will only last for a little while. And I thought, you know what? By the help and grace of the Lord, yeah. I don't want that joy to ever Amen. come out of my heart. And yeah. I thank the Lord for saving me. Amen. 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 Go ahead, Brother Wayne. Amen. October 13th, 1983, I was serving through the bus Yeah. The buses. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? Anybody in the balcony want to give us one? Wait, somebody's saying it. Hold on, Brother Keith. Let's get these ladies. I got you next, sister. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. About that. <laughs> Tell him. Forty years today. Amen. 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 Go ahead, sister. because I didn't want to go to hell. Yep. That's a good enough reason to get saved. Amen. Amen. You'll love the Lord and you'll grow in that relationship, but if you get saved because you don't want to go to hell, that's good enough. Amen. Yep. I praise the Lord for that. Are you pointing at me? Go ahead. One more and then we'll see. Yeah, go ahead, Thomas.
Yeah. He's always been. Amen. 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 Bless his holy name. I heard a guy say the other day that the person that wrote Just As I Am, that's the only song they wrote. We don't know that they wrote anything. Wouldn't you have been, if you only wrote one, that'd be a good one to write. <laughs> I don't know how many people have been saved while that song's been sung in churches all across this world. I praise the Lord for that. All right, listen to them. You know how we got saved? That name, Jesus. That's how we got saved. Let's let them sing. Kim, what number you got? Let's sing. 219 in your hymn book. Find your book. Turn to 219. Let's rear back and sing it out for Jesus tonight. Grace greater than our sins. Marvelous grace of our love.
Thursday the 23rd, uh, the youth choir is going to be going over to uh, Harvest Time Baptist Church, Brother Bruce Ward, and going to be preaching, uh, going to be singing over there at 7 o'clock, that is on the 23rd, and then on the 25th, which is a Saturday, uh, the youth choir is going out to Zion Hill and going to be singing out there, so keep these uh, youth choir trips in mind, and then also on the 25th, um, Miss Kelly Tucker is having a uh, uh, get together for the senior saints, the ice cream uh, social singing and testimonies and preaching out at the school cafeteria and that will be from 5 to 7 on uh, Saturday the 25th. Um, we still need one more person that would uh, provide breakfast once a week for a Morganton bus route. Uh, that bus route goes, the bus goes down Highway 70 so anybody in that direction that would be willing to help out uh, that would be a blessing if you could do that. And then uh, youth rally coming up. Please be praying for that. And along those lines, um, Brother Jason needs three 32-inch flat-screen TVs. If you'd be willing to uh, get rid of your TV for the weekend, just give it to Brother Jason, and Lord willing, you'll get it right back after youth rally. <clears throat> All right, let's go ahead and have our ushers come forward, and uh, we will take up our offering. Ladies, do remember that next Sunday afternoon, there's going to be a baby shower for Miss Alicia Sanders out at the uh, school cafeteria at 5 o'clock next Sunday afternoon. And a lady that is on our uh, prayer list, Miss uh, Jennifer Collins, she has been on there for a while, uh, been fighting cancer, and she got a good report and uh, wanted to thank the church for praying for her. And uh, she wanted you to continue praying for her, pray that, you know, don't get, it's in remission, so uh, just pray, continue praying for her, but thank you, church. Let's go ahead and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we do love you, Lord, for saving us and for the grace of God that uh, keeps us, Lord, because... We continue to sin, but you cover us, Lord, with the holiness and the righteousness of your Son, Jesus Christ. This brother Tony preached this morning. Thank you, Lord, for that. Thank you that we have eternal security through your Holy Spirit, Lord, that we cannot explain. But we are so thankful, God, that we've got heaven to look forward to. Lord, we think about all these people on these prayer lists that are fighting cancer, Lord, and going through so many hardships, God. But as Christians, we know, Lord, we have got a blessed hope and looking forward to that blessed appearing of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Lord. Thank you, God, for your goodness to us. Pray, Lord, that you'd anoint Brother Tony to preach. I pray, God, that you'd bless this offering, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. amen. Kids, go ahead and get the change. He's putting the buckets out now. Oh, we got all kinds of change back here. We need some more children down this aisle. Here comes one. Now. Son, he's fast. Catch him. Too late. She's going down through there. There we go. Anybody? 
somebody over here needs somebody to get his. Brother Parker's getting it. My Lord. sure what I'm supposed to say <laughs> they're all wanting me to say something yeah you can keep thinking that young at heart he said his art is about a hundred years old like the rest of him <laughs> closed he said amen let's all stand and turn to number 70 praise the Lord for brother Parker helping us out there helping out the children number 70 brother Ken was praying there and we do certainly have our share of troubles and trials in this life, but I'll tell you this, one of these days we will stand before the Lord and it will be worth it all when we see Christ. Think about the good words while you sing it now. Of times the day seems long, our trials hard to bear. We're tempted to complain, to murmur and despair. Sing it now. Christ will soon appear. Think about these words. Catch his bride away. All tears forever over. In God's eternal day. Sing it now. It will be worth it all. Yeah, cut you off and then never let you testify. Go ahead real quick and tell them about it, brother. Yeah. Yeah, amen. Amen. Struggled with doubt for a little while too, didn't you, brother Keith? Tell that. Hey, man. In a free will cottage prayer meeting, he got assurance of eternal security. <laughs> Ain't God good on the second verse. Sometimes the sky looks dark. We're, think about the words now. We're tossed and driven on. No human help inside. it out you know it takes us a while to check everything out but when we get to heaven there'll be no checking it out time one glimpse of his dear face all sorrow will race it'll be worth it all after that one glimpse let's sing it on the last life's day will soon be yours all storms forever
try this in Brother Marvin. Praise the Lord. Matthew chapter 18. Matthew 18. Be praying for Brother Dennis's brother Jack as he has got some uh, results. We're awaiting results from biopsy on a mass that they found this week on him. So pray and ask the Lord to give a good report on that. Also, keep praying for Miss Kim Blake as she was supposed to start her next round of treatments uh, tomorrow. Now remember, the last round of treatments did uh, 50%, knocked everything down half size. So where she was not looking forward to the treatments themselves because of how sick they make her, but she was looking forward to getting started with them and getting them over with and in hopes that it'll knock it all the rest of the way out. So a little discouraged, I'm sure. And on top of that, she has a very serious infection in her blood. She does not have a very good immune system right now. Uh, the treatments typically tear down the immune system. And so I want you to be praying for her that the Lord would help Miss Kim and Brother Scott as well. And then uh, pray for Brother Matt and his families. They'll be traveling through the night to try and get home. Pray the Lord to take care of them. Had to, uh, the glory of God showed up for them this morning, it sounds like. So we praise the Lord for that. Also, we do have a few of the youth rally prayer lists still laying up here. I appreciate Brother Nick as he ran the all-night prayer meeting and the crew that came. As I mentioned this morning, a good number showed up to begin with. Sound like a pretty good number stayed through the entire night. And we praise the Lord for that. I believe the Lord pays attention to extra effort. It's uh, just like the fasting. Thank those of you that have been fasting this week and, and that will be in the upcoming days. That, that was fasting for sleep that night, doing your body without sleep to let the Lord know how serious you are about the prayers that we're offering. And so I want to thank everybody for that. And if you want to get a youth rally prayer list to help you with your praying and your fasting for it, that they are up here. Did you get some more, Brother Jason? We got plenty. All right, he's got a stack, and there's a few up here. Matthew chapter 18, verse 15. Matthew 18, verse 15. The Bible says here, <clears throat> Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. If he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as an heathen man, and a publican. Heavenly Father, I pray you'd bless now. In the next few minutes, help the message, Lord, to stir our heart. Challenge us, Lord, in this particular area that we would, uh, Lord, be obedient to you and be a blessing to others, and uh, especially in these situations that are tough. I pray that you'd help us learn something tonight that would help us in these tough situations. We'll praise you for it. In Jesus' name, and all God's people say it. Now, we have had plenty of opportunities to rejoice tonight. And uh, in the singing, in the choir, extra song by the choir, extra congregation, testimonies of salvation, you have had wonderful opportunities to rejoice. And uh, if you missed it, you missed it. Because there will be very few opportunities for rejoicing in the next couple of minutes, all right? And here in Matthew chapter 18, as we read in these few verses, uh, these are tough verses. These are verses that are easy to read and hard to live, but are nonetheless very important as they are recorded in the text of the Word of God. I heard a message uh, last year in Ohio by a preacher, and he was preaching from this text, and in his message he made a statement, and the statement, as often happens, got my attention. I wrote it down. It's been in my notebook for a long time, and I believe I want to preach on it tonight. I want to preach for a few minutes on this thought, handling trespasses. Handling trespasses. Now, the text said here in uh, verse 15, Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. You know, Jesus said in Luke 17, 1, It is impossible, but that offenses will come. Offenses are not your typical troubles and trials of life. Troubles and trials of life could be nobody's fault. Uh, sickness comes into our life, it, it's nobody's fault, maybe. Uh, some kind of natural disaster comes and affects our family, tears your house down or, or, or wrecks the cars or whatever. That's nobody's fault. That's just troubles and trials of life. A certain amount of that's coming to all of us. We know it. Jesus said, in this life you shall have tribulation. Be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. So troubles and trials are one thing, but offenses is another thing because offenses is a person. He said it is impossible, but that offenses will come. That means that in this life, we are going to have conflicts. Now, it's also uh, not an excuse to be offensive, though. Let me go ahead and just throw that out right here at the beginning. Well, you know, offenses are going to come. I mean, we're going we're gonna to rub each other the wrong way from time to time. We're going to get on each other's nerves from time to time. No, listen, the truth is, yes, offenses are going to come. 
But the rest of the verse, he says, Woe unto him through whom they come. So because it's going to happen is not an excuse for us to be the one causing it and not worrying about it because, oh, that's just life. Oh, that's just how I am. Oh, that's just how the men in our family are. No, we have no excuse. If we're saved, we have the Holy Spirit living inside of us. And the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, goodness, gentleness, meekness, temperance. And so all of those things mean I can change. That's what that means. If my old man is a hothead and a troublemaker and a loud mouth and I get saved, then the fruit of the Spirit is that Jesus can change that old man and he don't have to be that way anymore. And listen, and we have no excuse for being that way. That goes for the ladies too. And so when he says it is impossible but that offenses will come, we need to learn from it that it is going to happen. But it is not an excuse to just be offensive and not worry about it. No, woe unto him through whom they come. So there is a woe to those who are causing the conflict. Now since they're going to come our way, no matter what, the question becomes then how are we going to handle trespasses? How are we going to handle these trespasses that come our way? Let me say a few things about it from these verses here in Matthew 18. It's good to be in church tonight, Amen. and it's good to be saved. Number one, let me give you a point of clarification. I want to point out in the text here, it said, If thy brother trespasses against thee, if thy brother trespasses against thee, notice it did not say, if he offends me. It did not say that's different. You say, why would you point that out? Well, the reason it didn't say that is because we're not supposed to get offended. We're supposed to be hard Christians, particularly mature Christians. How many of you have been saved 10 years or more? Raise your hand. Don't lie. But you know I'm setting you up. 10 years or more. How about 20 years or more? 30 years or more. Mm. 40 years or more. See, I'm out now. I can yell at you 40 plus, praise God. Them 40 and over, they ought to be there. No, I'm just kidding. Anybody that's been saved for any length of time, been in church, been under the preaching of the Word of God, the teaching of the Bible, we're supposed to grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We are supposed to mature spiritually, and we are supposed to be hard to offend. Hard to offend. Great peace have they that love thy law, and... Well, you say, well, that's in the book of Psalms. Well, you can just bring that up to the Lord if you want to. But great peace have they that love thy law, the word of God, and nothing shall offend them. We're not supposed to allow anyone. Now, notice the first part of the verse. We preachers like to focus on the last part of the verse, nothing, nothing shall offend them. We think that means we can be offensive and you can't get upset about it. No, woe unto him to whom the offense comes. I'm fairly sure that we preachers are going to have to answer for some things we've said from the pulpit. By the way, things that because we said it from the pulpit, we acted as if God wanted us to say it. And I'm fairly sure through my years there have been some things I've said from the pulpit that God was up there saying, I didn't say that. Particularly them extra offensive things. Them things that I say in anger from the pulpit. Because the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. And so we have no excuse. We should not be offensive. But at the same time, those of us who have been saved a long time are not supposed to be offended. Great peace have they which love thy law. What happens when you let somebody offend you is you have allowed that person to take your peace. And we shouldn't allow anybody to have control of our peace. Jesus is the Prince of Peace, and He lives in my heart. And there should be nobody in my life that should have power over that that is Him in me. So great peace have they that love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. I won't let anybody take my peace is what our mindset should be. Now, in another place, Isaiah said it this way, Thou wilt keep him, to my God, thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. Typically, when we get offended, we have allowed our mind to get off of the Lord and the things of God, and it's on that person. But great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Don't let them take your peace. And uh, he can give you perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. So in the, in the book of 1 Corinthians, Paul is talking about some things that were offending some of these early Christians, particularly the eating of meats and things like that, meats that have been offered to idols, stuff that pertained to the law mostly. In that text, he was talking about how we that understand 
that those things do not still apply, we shouldn't just be flippant. In other words, we shouldn't just act like, oh, they're being silly, and it don't matter what they think. Listen to me. He says, no, 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 you be careful not to offend. And listen how he, look at me. Listen how he describes people that get offended. He says, the weaker. He says, those that have a weak conscience. Now that's the Apostle Paul under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is saying those people who are readily offended are spiritually immature. Now that's, that's what the Holy Spirit's writing in 1 Corinthians 8. He's saying they just don't, they've not grown, they're not mature, they're not strong. Now Paul had the right spirit. Paul said, if me eating meat is going to offend them as silly as I think it is, I just won't eat meat around them. Rather than say, you need to, you know, Paul said, look, no, 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 it's not worth it. I'm not going to go out of my way and offend them. You know why? Because woe unto him through whom the offense has come. Now, it's one thing we could say, well, they ought to know better. Bless God. I don't care what they say. Now, wait a minute. We're supposed to care what they say. Paul said, uh, you know, give consideration to that weak brother. And so a point of clarification here is that it said, if thy brother trespass against thee, it did not say if he has offended you because hopefully a person can trespass against us and we don't always automatically get offended by it. It's a sign of spiritual immaturity if every time someone trespasses in your direction, you immediately are offended. Boy, don't you wish now we would have took more testimonies on salvation a while ago. <laughs> Amen. Point of clarification. All right, secondly, let's look at the pattern for meditation. The Lord then lays out a pattern. Now, it's worth noting here that it says specifically of thy brother, which means the context is between Christians. The Lord knew that we, even as Christians, Brother Eddie just got saved, and he's excited about it. I wish y'all could have seen him when they were singing, I'm saved to the uttermost. He was standing up up there with his hands straight up. Amen. Saved to the uttermost right here tonight. Just as saved as any of us. Amen. Amen. Brother Eddie gets in church and grows in the Lord and begins to walk with God. What he's going to find out is what the Lord knew right here, that even among Christians there are times we're going to have that conflict. Among Christians, if thy brother. This is speaking about Christians, but God lays out in these verses some steps that should be used in extreme circumstances. Now, I'm saying extreme circumstances because many things could just be let go. Many things that are trespasses could just be let go. You say, well, I don't know about that. Well, you know what it said about Jesus? It said that they reviled Jesus. That means verbally attacked him. And he reviled not again. Now, against the Pharisees, he stood up and spoke some pretty straight things. So there were some times he felt like, hey, I've got to deal with this and I've got to deal with it publicly. I've got to deal with it verbally. But then there were other times when they were saying things about him that he just took it. So we sometimes, see, what, what we're going to do if we're not careful is we like to grab these verses and we like to use them every time anybody does the least little bit. Well, that's not what it's in here for. It's in here for them extreme cases where it just can't be let go because the unity of a family, and I believe we could extend it, the unity of a business, the unity of a church, the unity of some relationship is being hindered by some situation that cannot simply be ignored. It cannot be just let go, so it must be dealt with. Well, then, God has given us a pattern for how to deal with those extreme trespasses. First of all, let me tell you what is omitted. Let me tell you in the pattern here for meditation, something for us to think about. Let me tell you what's not there, what he did not say we can do in these situations. First of all, the online rant is not here. I want you to see it does not say go online and use social media to offer vague statements and discourses about people. Now this is not a shot at anybody, but if you're already getting offended, go back to point number one. If a pastor can't talk about this stuff, who's going to? We've got to. See, the internet in all of its goodness also has all of its wickedness. But typically when we think about the wickedness of the internet, we just in our minds think about the pornography part and all that. Oh, I'm afraid it's doing a lot more damage than just that. 
It has freed us from the inhibitions that normally would have kept us quiet. And so let me say the online rant is not here. He does not say we can go online and offer vague statements and discourses about people. It goes something like this. Don't you hate it when people blah, 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 blah. Norm, listen, when you read that on somebody's Facebook account, it is a result of some trespass. Some people have just done the blah, 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 and so they're fixing it. You need to understand something. You, you, I'm, feeling, I'm feeling like some of you ain't liking this. Which, which really hurts me. The old me wants to climb up on top of the pulpit and start throwing stuff at you. But the more mature Christian is not offended, nor does he want to preach in anger. But I'm telling you, it is busting up friends, families, and churches because our immediate response now to any trespass is... Well, I didn't put nobody's name. You didn't have to. That person that did the blah, 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 that is exactly what you wrote, they know it's them. And by the way, all your friends that you then will communicate privately with, they'll all know who it was too because you'll tell them. Because the public discourse that's vague is just for the worldwide people. The person that'll do that also tells their closest ones who it was. Probably 90% of the time. It goes something like this. That moment when someone who's supposed to be a Christian, blah, 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 blah. Or that moment when someone who's supposed to be your friend. You need to understand. Listen, I'm telling you, we are hurting the work of the Lord with this I preached against social media forever I preached against all of it forever said don't get none of it finally realized that is never going to happen and I also realized that it's almost like the radio the radio is full of wickedness say amen, amen. but we use the radio I'm on a radio broadcast here I'm on a radio broadcast in Asheville I'm on the radio broadcast in Mexico Missouri we use the radio to announce uh, the youth rally, and we use it for other things. And so it was like the Spirit said, you know, uh, the radio's got a lot of wicked on it, but you're using it to spread the gospel. The television's got a lot of wickedness on it, but people use it to spread the gospel. There's some things you could do. And so I opened up a little bit, and I allowed the church to have one. Brother Marvin monitors that one, and I got Twitter, which is the only one I really have. I watch Carson's Instagram uh, to make sure, too, that she's not doing nothing crazy on it. But you know what? I put myself some very strict rules in place before I ever opened it up because I know how I am. I know, listen, when I was watching Kentucky play the other night and all the haters were burning Twitter up, I wanted to, I wanted to say a lot of stuff. I was thinking, you, oh, oh, I about bit my own thumbs off not to do it. And I told you before, preachers are gifted. Listen, preachers are gifted at hammering home our point. It's, it's what we do. And boy, we can talk trash if we need to. I think of some of the most wonderful zingers sometimes and don't ever get to say them. And I think, oh, they'd love that. The rest of this crowd would love that if they could hear it. And doesn't people standing around love it when somebody drills somebody else? Come on, you know you do. They go, ooh, but that was a good one. <laughs> when you put them vague statements on there, 95% of the time it is because of some trespass that's come into your life. It's got you upset. There's a guy on uh, ESPN. He's a former basketball or former football coach, and now he's a commentator. And he's always talking about these players that get themselves and these coaches that get themselves in trouble by putting stuff online that gets them in trouble. They comment on some social issue and then everybody blows it up or they say something about the team that just cut them or whatever. And he's got this saying. He says, look, fellas, he said, type it out if you want to. He said, type it out all you want. And then he says, but don't hit send. Don't 
hit sin. That ought to be our slogan. Write it down if you need to. Put an essay together about when people who are supposed to be Christians, blah, 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 blah. But just don't hit sin. sin. Just don't hit sin. It's not here. We don't get to do it. If you're not careful, it's sowing discord among the brethren. And that personal trespass that was done against you is not frowned upon in the Bible nearly as much as he that soweth discord among the brethren, which is an abomination and one of the things the Lord hates. And so what is omitted is the online rant. It, it is not here. What also is omitted is the outright recruitment. The Bible does not say, and nor does it condone, the search for others who have experienced a similar situation with this brother. If thy brother trespass. If we're not careful when a brother trespasses, we begin to wonder if I'm the only one he's done this to or she's done this to. And then it's almost like the FBI part of us kicks in and we want to investigate and find out if we're the only one. And we go looking for them. Now what that does is it creates this group and it's like an ambush mentality is getting ready to take place. Which is opposite of the plan God puts in here for handling the extreme cases when a trespass has to be dealt with. So the online rant is out. The outright recruitment, if we're not careful, we just want to find other victims so that the ambush can be put in place. What is offered then? What does the Lord say we can do when it's necessary to be dealing with a trespass? First of all, in verse 15, let's look at verse 15. I would say, are you still awake? But I'm fairly sure everybody's awake tonight. Verse 15, Moreover, if thy brethren shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. First of all, here is the pattern the Lord has laid out. Notice the go in this pattern. Verse 15, there at the first part, it says, Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go. See, often what I want to do in my heart is I want to wait till they come to me. I want to sit back mad because they've trespassed against me and I'm going to wait till they figure it out and I'm going to wait till they come. See, that's a whole lot easier than what's the word he used? Wait till they come is a whole lot easier than go, but the Lord said the best pattern is go. As a matter of fact, in one text he says, if you, if you know a brother has all against you. Now listen to this one. It doesn't say if they have a right to have an ought against you. It just says, if you know they do. It says, if you're bringing an offering to the Lord and you know thy brother has an ought against you, leave the offering and go talk to that brother. The pattern's right here. Go, and then come back and offer the offering. That's a hard one, man. That is a hard one. Notice the go in the pattern. Notice the alone in the pattern. Verse 15 again. Go and tell him his fault between thee and him. Say the word. Listen clearly here. There is no need for anyone else to even know at this point. I would say aside from your spouse, because I, I don't think you ought to keep anything from your spouse. That means nobody. Well, what about my BFF? Alone. In the Greek, that don't mean you and your BFF. Well, what about my 400,000 Facebook friends? Say the Bible word again. Uh, that's right. You say, well, you're trying to make light. Yeah, medicine's better if you can smile a little and laugh while you're taking it. But the Bible is very clear. Very clear. Now listen, think about this now. This is if they have trespassed against me. They have done me wrong in some way. Says then for me to go to them alone. Now, if it's me and it's a lady, I have to make arrangements for that. I should not be alone with another adult lady. I need to have somebody else in the meeting. My spouse would be the best choice, or her spouse would be the best choice. But other than something like that, we have no reason to recruit help to go and try to deal with this trespass at the beginning. Notice the go, notice the alone, notice the extra effort. In verse 16. 
But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more. Now some of you are going to get real excited on that one or two more because now finally you get to go tell some people that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. Let me say a couple things to you. First of all, if we're not careful, we'll do that first step and we'll say, well, I gave it a shot and they won't straighten up, so I'm off the hook. Well, not in this plan, you're not. There's an extra effort offered here. And let me say this about the one or two others that go with you. This needs to be somebody, listen, who is respected by both parties as a spiritual person. Let me say that again. If Brother Brian has offended me again, as he has so many times through the years, very offensive Brother Brian is. And I'm hurt. I'm, I'm, I'm not offended, though. I'm not supposed to be offended, but he's trespassed. That's the word I should have used. Obviously, I was already an immature Christian right there. I'm an immature Christian already in this story. Well, great. Many times I was an immature Christian, but no more. Amen. If Brian has trespassed against me and I'm bothered by it to the point that I feel like I can't just let it go. You say, how do you just let stuff go? Well, the way you let stuff go sometimes is you give the benefit of the doubt. You look at what they said or did and think, well, maybe they just didn't mean that. Maybe they're having a horrible day. Have you ever had a horrible day and did some really stupid things in the midst of your horrible day? If you're like me, when you're having a horrible day, you're hateful. How many of you are hateful on your horrible days? And I am. I've learned just to try to get away from everybody. And, and Becca and Miss Stiles will say, is everything all right? I'll say, everything's fine. Is everything okay? I'm fine. You know what I want to say if I ask that third time? <laughs> I told you I'm fine. <laughs> I'm trying to stay away from you people. <laughs> so, you know, the way you give the benefit of the doubt, you say maybe they're having a horrible day, maybe they didn't mean that, whatever the case may be, I'm just going to let it go. But if I cannot let it go, and now it's a hindrance in my own heart. It's a hindrance in the unity. He's standing right over here behind me in the choir. I'm sitting right here the whole time they're singing about the Lord. I'm thinking, what a hypocrite he is. What a jerk he is. That Brian Wilson. If I wasn't, if I wasn't a mature Christian, I'd be so offended right now. All right, so now we've got to deal with it. All right, I go to him. I said, Brother Brian, that thing you said or did the other day, it was, it was out of line. You shouldn't have done it. I think we need to work on it. And if he just brushes it off and says, oh, you're being stupid, you know, grow up, whatever. I know more than you, blah, 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 whatever he says, and I go away. I don't get to say, well, I gave it a shot, that's it. No, now I've got to go to step two. I said, well, I need to get some help on this. Now, here's the trick. I can't just bring somebody that's my bestie. Because he don't respect them. Here's what he sees when we're coming together. Oh, they're coming to gang up on me. Oh, he's brought, he's brought reinforcements. Now they're going to come get me. Well, we got nothing. If, he, if we come into the meeting and that's his heart, it's over. So what I have to do is I have to find somebody that I know he respects. That the person he respects that I respect as a spiritual third party enough that they will be spiritual and unbiased. That's who you bring. That's who you tell. And that's what this means right here. It doesn't mean that finally now God's given me permission to share this with all of my good close friends so they can help me pray. Well, be careful about that because you might not really mean that prayer part. You might just want to talk about it. And so notice the go, notice the alone, notice the extra effort in verse 17, notice the final part. If they won't even hear that third party, then you tell it unto the church. That means that if the conflict was getting to the point of hindering the spirit and unity of the church and the flowing of the Holy Spirit in the church, you'd need to tell the preacher or the leadership of the church and let them then get involved. Now, please, let's don't have a line after the service tonight. <laughs> if we can wait and spread it out over the next few weeks, that would be great. But that is the Bible pattern. Very few people do it this way. Often we blow it all up. And then the preacher has to get involved in the cleaning up the mess of how we handled it poorly. But God's plan is you go, you go alone. You know, if I go and tell somebody that I feel like they've trespassed against me and they find out I haven't told anybody else, a whole lot easier to find peace there. Many times the real problem becomes that you, you've already told five or six or seven people. Then you find out that person didn't even mean it. And when you actually talk to them, peace is made. And now in your mind, you're thinking, mm. well, look, well, look now, I, I just want you to know I did tell, I, you know, I did ask these 18 people to pray. 
so that they all think you're wicked too. But I'm sorry, I misunderstood you. Hope we're good, I'll see you later. Now y'all know what happens just like it. You go sometimes and finally find out that it was a misunderstanding, only now to have to go around and try to tell everybody that you let find out that you were wrong about it if you even do that. And so that's why the Lord says, first just go by yourself, make it right by because it might be nothing. And if you're able to look at them and say, hey, I just want you to know, I didn't tell anybody else and I'm so glad because this was just a misunderstanding, then it can be completely, really, listen, it can really be over. And we can go on for God and not have a hindrance into the unity and the Spirit of God. And so first of all, we're almost done. The point of clarification is, you know, it says trespass is not offended. The pattern for meditation, what is not there, what is there. Go alone, give extra effort with a spiritual third party, and then if needed, bring the church leadership into it. But let me give you this third one, and this is the key. The purpose is restoration. Look at verse 15 again, and this is the statement the preacher made from which this message was born. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear it, look at the last part, and if you underline, you ought to underline this. Thou hast, what's the next word? Gained thy brother. Here's the statement he made. He said, when you're going through this plan, the goal must be, look at me, the goal must be to gain a brother. It doesn't matter how perfectly you follow the plan if in your heart it's not to win that brother back, then you're not right. You say, what do you mean? I mean, sometimes we like that go to them. Some of you like that go to them and tell them part. Some of you are geared that way. You like to go speak your mind. Well, the Bible says if, if somebody's trespassed against me, what I'm supposed to do is go right to them and tell them what I think. Now, that is what the Bible says. Go and go alone and talk to them. But listen, if you go and in your heart the very purpose of your going is not to win them back, then you are wrong. Purpose matters. Why matters to God? Well, God said I could come and I'm going to come and tell you what I think and I'm doing right. No, you're not. Because you're just coming to talk trouble and to make it worse, not in hopes of gaining a brother. When Paul confronted Peter to the face, it was to, in hopes, fix the problem that was being a hindrance in the unity of the church between the Gentiles and the Jews. It wasn't just to tell him off. So if we go to them alone because we really just want to give them a piece of our mind, we're doing wrong. If we get others involved, second step, simply because we really just want some other people to know, not because we really are trying to gain that brother back, then we're wrong. If we tell the preacher and the other leaders simply because we want them to know the truth about so-and-so, then we're wrong. Teenagers, this all applies to you. This is not just for adults. Saved teenagers got to go by this. Be careful. Brother Cole, you come to the piano. That would have been a good night to accidentally say come to the altar, wouldn't it? Brother Cole, come to the altar. I had a lady call me one time years ago. She called me, and when she got on the phone, she came across as if she was uh, concerned. She was concerned with an in-law situation. She began to tell me these concerns with this in-law as if it was very, very serious, and she was worried. We went a little further in the conversation. As, as it started to get more serious, I very quickly started saying, well, you know what, I, you're right, and, and I'll help you today. I will call, and I started naming the people that I was going to call in order to help fix this very serious concern she had about the in-laws. I said, I'll call right now, such and such, and, and we'll get this thing going. And she goes, well, well, well no, you know, no, I didn't, no I, don't really, I didn't really want you to do that. Well, then I said, well, I, as soon as we hang up, then I'm going to call. Go ahead and start playing, Brother Cole. I'm going to call, and I named the, not the in-law, but the spouse to that in-law she's talking about. I said, I'll call that person and at least tell him how big a deal we've got going here. What? I mean, this is a big deal. No, 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 absolutely. No, I would, I would not want you to do that. I started uh, getting confused. I started thinking, oh, wait a minute, one of two things. Either all that stuff is not true 
or not as bad as you just painted it out to me. Or we've got to fix this. And I said that. She's like, well... And she just started backing up, man, like she is moonwalking. Michael Jackson, buddy. <laughs> Before it was all over, it wasn't really all that bad. No, not really. I guess, no, really, I hadn't seen. No, I hadn't really seen it. I guess it and just went on. You say, what was it? I'll tell you what it was. Now, this is going to sound harsh, but here's exactly what it was. She just wanted the preacher to hear that bad stuff about that person. Because I'm going to be honest with you. I thought a lot of that person. I probably thought more of the one she was attacking spiritually than if you'd asked me than I did the one doing the talking. And I think that was why she was doing the talking. Because you know, if you can push down the one everybody thinks highly of, it lifts you up a little bit sometimes. You say, what are you saying? I'm saying she could have said, preacher, I'm trying to do part three of Matthew 18. But she really wasn't. Because she wasn't trying to gain a brother. Her motivation for calling wasn't so that I could get involved and fix anything because she didn't want me to. And it really wasn't even that bad. She just wanted me to get a bad picture of that other person. Let me tell you what that is. That's wicked. That's wicked. And so the motivation matters. You don't get to just go to everybody's face and tell them what's on your mind and feel like you're doing it the Bible way. No, not unless your purpose is to fix the relationship and gain a brother. Now, I understand that it don't always work. Does everybody understand that? I know that I could have the very best heart possible if I keep using me and Brother Brian. I know that I could get right with God and mean it in my heart. Lord, I do not want anything between me and Brother Brian. We've been friends for years. Please help me. When I go to him, Lord, touch his heart, soften his heart. Help me to say it right. Help me not to be offensive myself. And when I go to him, you understand that God's not going to make him do right. It'll be his choice. And no matter how right I do it, ultimately he could refuse to receive it. Does everybody understand that? So I cannot control the outcome. All I can control is my motivation in my heart. Am I going through these steps because I truly hope to gain a brother? By the way, this is in families. It's in church, communities, business. Now in this text, it's a Christian deal, if thy brother. But these principles will work in any part of life because they're God's. We have got to have the desire of restoration in our heart. You say, what if I can't get that? Then you need to wait quietly and ask God to give you that desire before you start the process. That means if I'm so hurt at Brother Brian that I cannot want it fixed, then I don't even need to start step one yet. Much less step two which is where we get others involved. Or step three, where I tell the preacher. Now, I could go to the preacher and say, Preacher, I've got a problem in my heart. There's been a trespass against me by another brother. And I want to make it right, but so far I can't find the forgiveness in my heart. And by the way, Peter one time said, Lord, I'm trying to do right. How many times if a brother trespasses, should I forgive him? Seven times. Y'all know what the Lord said? How about 70 times seven? In other words, how about just keep on forgiving? Here's what we need. I'm closing. Unity is vital to the power and the presence of God. Unity is vital to the power of God in a place. Vital. The devil will always employ divide and conquer. He does it in homes. He does it in businesses. He does it certainly in churches. Divide and conquer. And so what we need in every church is certainly what we need in ours and what we need in every family. So we need these three things. Peacemakers, excuse me, peacekeepers that love the Bible and are extremely hard to offend. That's the first thing we need to be. I need to be a peacekeeper that loves thy law and nothing shall offend me. That's very hard to offend. And I want to be that. I try to be that. The second thing we need is peacemakers who are quick to forgive. Blessed are the peacemakers. 
A peacemaker is somebody who is good at giving the benefit of the doubt. They're good at saying they probably didn't mean it. <clears throat> They're good at forgiving that 70 times 7. We need peacekeepers that love the Bible and are hard to offend. We need peacemakers who are quick to forgive. And we need peace speakers who, when it is necessary, can go with a true spirit of meekness and with the ultimate desire to gain a brother. You know, that person who prides themselves in being one that says whatever's on their mind, that's not you. You're not the peace speaker. The peace speaker is the one who in the spirit, if a brother be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, consider such a one in the spirit of meekness, it says, we go to him. And so that peace speaker is the one who has a spirit of meekness, who truly desires restoration and can go and talk when it has to be talked and can do it right. And we need all three. You know, if you got a peace speaker and they show up at one of them peacekeepers who's hard to offend, you're going to have a good result. You're going to have somebody say, I, I just needed to come. There's been something bothering me. There's been something driving me crazy. And I'll be honest with you, I've been hindered in the services. And, and I, you know, I don't know if you meant it or not, but it's just been driving me crazy. I just needed to come. I feel like I needed to come to you. All right, if the other side is a peacekeeper, they'll say, well, man, tell me what it is. I don't, want, I don't want to hurt you. And they begin to tell. And what that other side will do if they're a peacekeeper and they're not easily offended is they won't get defensive. And they'll listen and they'll explain it. And hopefully, then what you've got at the end is you've got peace again restored. Great peace. And nothing shall offend them. He keep the imperfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. The Lord is blessing in our church. I mean, people don't just call you before the service and say, can I come see you, preacher? As Chris said, can my uncle come talk to you? I said, what about? He said, salvation. Let me tell you, I've been pastoring a good while. I don't think I've ever had that before. A couple of times I've had parents bring their children. That's a big deal. God's doing some things, so we know the devil's going to do some things, counterattack, spiritual warfare. That means there's going to be real opportunity in here for conflict. So we need some peacekeepers who are hard to offend. We need some peace uh, makers who are quick to forgive. And we need some peace speakers that when it's that extreme case that we must go and talk about it, we can do it in a spirit of meekness, desiring to gain a brother. Would you just pray with me that the Lord will help our church, that He'll protect our church. Here's the way I pray. I say, Lord, protect us from attacks and accusations from without. And protect us from division within. I pray that all the time. Because that's how he busts them up. The attacks from without aren't nearly as dangerous as the division from within. So let's pray if we would while Brother Cole will sing. And we just, some of us, come to the altar and ask the Lord to protect our church. And ask him to help us to grow as Christians and mature. And to be peacekeepers, peacemakers, peace speakers. That he cannot cause division. Father, I pray that you'd help us now as a church. We know that when we preach a message like this, it's going to get tested. And I hate that, but I know it's true, and I know we need them. I need them. Lord, I struggle with this. I get mad. I run my mouth. I pray you'd help me to be a leader in it. Help me to be spiritually mature. Help our teenagers to be spiritually mature that have been saved a while. Certainly help us as moms and dads to model this in front of our children. We'll praise you for it in Jesus' name. Brother Cole. My strength is gone, my heart oh, is yes. full of sorrow. I wouldn't take this message I and just brush it off. Believe how much I've let you down. If there is a situation in your life that requires I dread the fixing that awaits for me. And let God speak to you about it tonight. Let's work on it. If I need to help, I'll do my best. My broken dreams scattered all. Listen to this So please forgive me I need your grace to make it through All I have is you I'm at your mercy Lord, I'll serve you Until my 
dying day I'll help others find their way I'm at your mercy Please forgive me I can't believe the God of earth and glory Would take the time to love someone like me then I read about that old story in the Bible and how he prayed for my forgiveness when he died upon a tree. So please forgive me. I need your grace to make it through. And Lord, I'll serve you until my dying day. I'll help others find their way. I'm at your mercy. 